Hello, folks. Welcome back to Chris White Reports with an update on the energy crisis in South Africa, the intentional implosion of the ESCOM parastatal for electricity in South Africa. In the last 48 hours, you're going to see here a host of headlines just in the last 48 hours about the perils of ESCOM, the current situation South Africans are facing, many of whom are already in stage eight load shedding, although the government denies that's the case. That's 12 to 14 hours a day without commercial electric power. Some people going without power for three days or more. Quite a tragic situation. Bear with us as we show you the next headlines from just the past 48 hours. And these aren't all the headlines, just a fair sampling of them. South Africa, it's become abundantly clear that this government has no intention of helping the people of South Africa. Well, the official opposition Democratic Alliance leader John Steenhuisen couldn't have said it better there. This government is incapable and unwilling to take care of the things it's responsible for and has left South Africans to fend on their own. Not only is this a disaster for foreign direct investment, frightening away investors who not only have to provide their own security in South Africa, but now also have to provide their own electricity. This is insane, pushing up the cost of production and making South Africa a highly inefficient place to do business. But beyond that, it's a disaster for South Africans of the highest magnitude. Unbelievable, the impact of this. As I have pointed out for years on this program and elsewhere, this is not simply a question of inconvenience. Oh, the lights are off. No. The impact of this goes far beyond that. Respirators in hospitals, medical equipment, people undergoing operations when the power goes out. Generators not kicking in because they're not maintained or they're overworked because they're on all the time in hospitals and critical facilities, not to mention the intelligence infrastructure of the country as if they have one. Robots, traffic lights that go out, pedestrians struck as people don't see the lights changing because they're not on or people running through the intersections. The loss of, now we see this with chickens, unbelievable chickens, chicken producers cannot, cannot, Keep their chickens alive because they're losing electricity at critical moments. Ice makers in Soweto, small businesses going bankrupt because 60% of the time there's no electricity. They can't produce enough ice at the peak summer season when they should be making the most revenue. This is bad. And what's going on here? Andre de Ryder, the uh, CEO of ESCOM, announces uh, his resignation on the 12th of December, the same day he's poisoned at the Sunning Hill headquarters after he's brought a cup of coffee. It's laced with cyanide. He survives it. It's announced to the public on the 14th that he is leaving ESCOM. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, the blame game is on now. Members of the African National Congress and Parliament are suddenly awake to the crisis that's been there for over a decade, going back to at least 2007. They're suddenly awake and they want to blame ESCOM. That's a problem. Deflection won't work here. ESCOM is the African National Congress. ESCOM is owned by the state and the state is owned by the ANC. The ANC are the ones who sent corrupt caters or cadres to fill its board for their own self-enrichment. They are the ones who sent incompetent CEOs prior to DeRider to be there to pilfer and to award contracts to fictitious and fraudulent or inefficient and ineffective subcontractors. They are the same people who bought things for 10, 50, 100 times the going market price for services and goods, bankrupting this company. They are the same political party that control most municipalities who have failed to pay their rates, their bills, and owe tens of billions of rand to this parastatal. 
Right now, the game is underway. The propaganda is out. You'll see it. If you watch those headlines, you know it's very closely that the ANC is trying to blame ESCOM, but ESCOM is the ANC. You can't get away with this. And ladies and gentlemen, there is no relief in sight. It's not simply, oh, we'll fix this in 12 to 18 months, as Enoch Gondawana told a gullible bunch of rubes of the World Economic Forum in Davos. That's fiction. You cannot fix this in 12 to 18 months. It is impossible. 60% of South Africa's electrical generation grid is offline. 60%. Not 6, not 16, not 26. 60%. 23,750 megawatts of unscheduled, boom, and, and scheduled in there as well. Gone. This is an utter disaster. It affects all South Africans. Productivity, refrigeration, transportation, security, crime running rampant because people's security alarms and cameras aren't working. People just breaking with impunity to their homes, their cars, destroying their lives, attacking, raping, murdering, pillaging. And what is the answer? Cyril Ramaphosa calls an energy summit. He cancels his trip to Davos where he was going to go beg for more money. And he comes back to South Africa. Well, he never left. And he sends Enoch Gondawan up there to lie and to hustle for more money, begging at the trough of the global elites. So he stays and he calls an emergency meeting. And guess what happens? They do a virtual session over Zoom or one of these other platforms. And what happens? The opposition parties can't attend because of load shedding. How fitting is it that the president of South Africa, whose party is responsible for the disaster about to befall his country, holds an online video conference to talk about the emergency issue of energy in South Africa, and most of the people who are supposed to come to it can't attend it because they don't have electricity. <laughs> that is a very fitting situation. Anyway, here's a quick rundown, a few moments once again, of all those headlines in case you missed them. This is just the last 48 hours. What can be done? Well, things can be done, but South Africans will suffer for the next three to five years, even in the best of circumstances. One of the, best, the quickest ways to do this is to purchase excess power from mines and from businesses that are generating power on their own off grid, add it to the grid. That will take some of the pressure off. The next step, of course, is to fire up the coal-fired power plants and burn coal, burn, 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 baby, burn, and get electricity out to people. And beyond that, these car power ships with natural gas, liquefied natural gas offshore, get about six or eight of those and alleviate the pressure while repairs are done with competent technicians brought back to the country after the ANC removes its racist legislation, its racial hiring policies. And then Within three to five years, South Africa can right the ship, but that doesn't solve the problem. You need to build new power plants, which will cost tens of billions of dollars. Not simply a bunch of solar photovoltaic cells sitting in the Karoo. That's not going to solve your problem. Anyway, folks, if you're not a subscriber, why don't you come on, join us right here. Thanks a lot for your support. Oh, South Africa, I feel for you. Cry the beloved country indeed.